Hello there. Back in the 90s when The Simpsons hit it big and a number of networks tried to jump on producing primetime animated series for a primarily adult audience, some succeeded while others failed. MTV, Fox, and Comedy Central found success in that area, but remember Fish Police at CBS or Capital Critters on ABC? Probably not. And at one point, HBO considered leaping into the pool and who better to make an animated series for them than Ralph Bakshi, one of the most notable names in the world of adult animation. The result was the anthology series Spicy City, and despite lasting about as long as the aforementioned shows, it was actually pretty good. Each episode of Spicy City consisted of its own story, unrelated to the other plots in the series, with the only connection being the setting of a futuristic city and each episode would be introduced by a nightclub host called Raven. The series has an obvious Blade Runner influence with how it depicts its setting, but then again, so does a lot of science fiction in the last 30 years. However, Bakshi and his team of writers still manage to give the world their own spin, even when tackling themes like virtual reality and police corruption. What makes it work are the interesting ideas presented in the writing. Each episode has to reintroduce new characters and new scenarios, and it does not take long to get involved in the story and that week's conflict. The characters' dilemmas are instantly understandable without dumbing down the material too much. The series also uses our knowledge of what future technology might be like as a jumping off point. One episode, for instance, delves into the notion of how new technology has a way of replacing the old methods. It's a theme that's been explored plenty of times before, though in this case, owing to the seedy nature of the city, it's with prostitution. Another episode revolves around a virtual reality chat room and the notion of escaping reality. In this day and age of people forming relationships over the internet and the use of avatars, this story is actually somewhat prophetic. Though, again, it's not the first time somebody has played with this concept, it just tells it very well. However, there are other episodes which use the future society to explore social commentary. In the only episode where Raven actually plays a pivotal role in the plot, and is not merely the host introducing the story, the show delves into discrimination. Of course, this is where the nods to Blade Runner are most prevalent, with Raven sharing quite a number of similarities with Rachel, not least of which is a story arc of finding out her true identity. However, just because something wears an influence on its sleeve does not lessen the product. Blade Runner is a strong source to use as a jumping off point to create your own futuristic stories, and as long as you add your own ideas to it, that's good enough. And that seems to be what Ralph Bakshi and his team did. Spicy City did not always delve into typical sci-fi tropes and social commentary. The episode, Manos Hands, has a funny, very out-there story of a bongo player who accidentally gets his hands chopped off by the mob, and it becomes a race against time to find them. This episode, one of two Bakshi himself directed, simply has a lot of fun with its premise, and the animation on the hands is very inventive, as they have to convey character without dialogue and facial expressions. If there's one major flaw I find with Spicy City, it can be best summed up in scenes like this. I'm not a prude by any stretch of the imagination. I have nothing against sex being depicted in films and television. It just has to have a point to it, otherwise it's just gratuitous. Compare this show to Fritz the Cat, Ralph Bakshi's first feature film. Yes, there's a lot of sex in that film, but it's there as part of the satire of the 1960s counterculture and necessary to the growth of the perverted title character. In Spicy City, it just seemed like it's there because it's HBO and you can do anything. The sex is not really pivotal to the story or the characters, and while it is a seedy setting, it's all a little too in your face with it. When the voice actor is even moaning seductively, you kind of have to wonder what the intentions were. During the release of Fritz the Cat, Ralph Bakshi had to continually remind people that the film was not pornography. And he's right, it's not. By definition, pornography is made to titillate the audience, and Spicy City dangerously walks that line. And while it does not quite cross it, it comes awfully close. Aside from that element, I still think Spicy City is one of the best things Bakshi has done 
and it's a worthwhile series to give a look if you can get a hold of it. But as is very obvious at this point, view discretion is advised. However, why did it only last six episodes? It wasn't for lack of ratings, as it did okay in that area, but rather because of behind the scenes issues. HBO wanted to order more episodes, on the condition that they hired different writers for the second season. Bakshi, likely with the memory of Cool World's constant rewrites still fresh in his mind, flat out refused, and HBO pretty much ended the series then and there. Ralph Bakshi retired shortly after that, but is now directing a new film called The Last Days of Coney Island, which is certainly a cause for celebration. See you next time.